Welcome back to another video. Today we're diving into a fascinating topic. Why does the Gambia exist? And before you just throw out the question saying does it really matter, just stick around and I promise it gets interesting. You see, this tiny West African country has a unique history and geography that makes it stand out on the continent. So let's explore how the Gambia came to be. If you enjoy this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Let me know what you'd like to see next and let's just get right into it. First off, let's start with some geography. The Gambia is the smallest country in mainland Africa, nestled within the west coast of the continent. It's a long, narrow strip of land that stretches along the Gambia River, which flows from east to west before emptying into the Atlantic Ocean. The country is entirely surrounded by Senegal, except for its small western coastline. This unique shape and location plays a crucial role in its history and overall existence. You see, the region around the Gambia River has been inhabited for thousands of years. Early settlers include the Wolof and Fula peoples, and these communities were part of larger West African empires such as the Mali and Sungai empires, which dominated the region through trade and conquest. And here comes the Gambia River, a vital trade route for these empires, making the movement of goods like gold, salt, and ivory possible and this set the stage for the river's importance for the centuries to come. But let's fast forward to the 15th century, when European explorers began arriving on the West African coast. The Portuguese were the first to explore the Gambia River, followed by the French and the British. Actually, in the 17th century, the British established a presence along the river, creating trading posts and forts. The Gambia became a key location in the transatlantic slave trade, with thousands of Africans forcibly taken from the region and shipped to the Americas. Fast forwarding once more to the late 19th century, we would see the scramble for Africa, where European powers divided the continent among themselves. During the Berlin Conference of 1984-1985, the borders of modern African states were drawn, often with little regard for existing ethnic or cultural boundaries. This is where the Gambia's unique shape comes into play. You see, the British and the French negotiated the borders, resulting in the Gambia being carved out along the Gambia River, surrounded by French-controlled Senegal. The British wanted to control the river for trade and strategic purposes, leading to the creation of this narrow strip of land. But before going any further, I need to take a quick second to ask you all for a favor. You see, I'm trying to reach 2,000 subscribers before the end of the summer, and to make that possible, well, I'll need your help. So if you can just take a second and just like and subscribe, I'll be on my way and let you enjoy the rest of the video. Done? Great, let's get right back into it. Under British rule, the Gambia remained a small but significant colony. The colonial administration focused on trade, agriculture, and maintaining control over the river. The 20th century brought waves of independence movement across Africa, and in 1965, the Gambia gained independence from Britain, becoming a sovereign nation. And if you're wondering why the Gambia never just became part of Senegal, there are several key factors to consider. First of all, the Gambia, despite its size, has a distinct cultural and historical identity. The people of the Gambia have a strong sense of national pride and heritage, rooted in the country's unique history along the Gambia River. This strong cultural identity has been a cornerstone in maintaining its independence. Under its first president's leadership, the Gambia also pursued a policy of non-alignment and maintained friendly relations with both Western and Eastern blocs during the Cold War. This diplomatic approach helped the Gambia secure international support and aid, contributing to its stability. Regionally, the Gambia has been an active member of the economic community of the West African states, and this regional organization promotes economic integration and political cooperation among West African countries, including Senegal. By participating in this community, the Gambia has benefited from regional stability and support. You see, the relationship between the Gambia and Senegal is unique and complex. Despite being surrounded by Senegal, the Gambia has maintained its independence, and the two countries have developed a relationship characterized by both cooperation and occasional tension. In the 1980s, the Gambia and Senegal attempted to create a confederation called Senegambia. The aim was to foster closer economic and political ties while maintaining their individual sovereignties. However, the confederation dissolved in 1989 due to political and administrative disagreements. Despite the dissolution of the Senegambia Confederation, the two countries continue to have a strong economic and social ties. This is also clear with many families having members on both sides of the borders, and cross-border trade is a significant aspect of their relationship. 
You see, at the end of the day, the Gambia's economy benefits from goods imported through Senegal and vice versa. However, since independence, the Gambia has also faced numerous internal challenges and milestones. The country has seen political upheavals, including a 1994 coup that brought in a dictator. His 22-year rule was marked by human rights abuses and authoritarian practices. However, in 2017, a significant political change occurred when a peaceful transition of power marked a hopeful moment for Gambian democracy. Despite its small size, the Gambia boasts a rich cultural heritage. The country is known for its vibrant music, dance, and traditions. Tourism is a key industry with visitors drawn to its beautiful beaches, wildlife, and historical sites. The Gambia's economy also relies on agriculture, particularly peanut farming, and remittances from Gambians living abroad. The country continues to navigate economic and developmental challenges, striving for growth and stability. So why does the Gambia exist? Well, it's a tale shaped by geography, colonial ambitions, and the enduring significance of the Gambia River. From ancient empires to European colonization and modern independence, the Gambia story is a fascinating example of how historical forces can carve out a nation's identity and borders. If you have enjoyed this video, let me know by liking and subscribing. Make sure you comment down below what you'd like to see next, and I'll see you on the next one.